Hey, what's up guys, it's Seth from Workbench, and this week we're gonna take a look at creating an interesting countdown in Cinema 4D. This week we're gonna take a look at creating an animated countdown inside of Cinema 4D. The setup is simple, but it's super versatile and can be used for other things. So let's get to it. So I'm gonna start off by creating a spline. I'm gonna to go to the top view here and I'm just gonna create a straight spline. I'm gonna grab the spline and set it to Bezier spline. I'm gonna set it to uniform and I'm gonna make it, let's say 100. I'm gonna take that and put it inside of a cloner and I'm gonna clone that along the Z, probably about 100 and I'm gonna set the Z to 10. I'm gonna select this and I'm do connect objects and delete. So if you look now, I just have a single object made of splines with plenty of subdivisions. Now that we've built this, let's take a look at how we're using it in our full setup. So I have my spline object here and I have a plane effector underneath that. My plane effector is set to 123 on the Y and I have it set to deformation points. And then under fall off, I have a couple things set up in here. I took my Motex object that I created my countdown in, and that's just basically a Motex object laid down on its side, and I animated the text from 10 to 1 every like 8 frames, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, so on, so on. I have it set to intermediate points, natural, and a number of 10. And then I dragged that into my fall off. And when you drag it in here, it asks you whether to be a point object or a MoGraph object, and you want it to be a point object. And then there's a couple settings here. I set this to surface. I believe by default it comes in as points. I set it to surface. I have it set to 11. I have it set to normal on the blending mode. And then on top of that, I added a delay set to spring, and I have that set to 20%. And what that's doing is just gives it a little bit of organic movement when it changes from one number to the next because it's just a jarring change from one number to the next number. And then on top of that, I added a random field. And the random field is set to max at 50%. And what it's doing is it's just giving this waviness on the outside. And then I took that random field and I animated it from left to right so that it had some waviness that's kind of rolling through the entire scene. Then I created a duplicate of that setup and I added an extrude to it so that when it renders out, you're not seeing through the object. Let me pop off a render here real quick. You can see this is what the base render out of cinema looks like. I just have one light overhead. I have it set to spot. I have soft shadows turned on and under details, I have my fall off set to linear and my inner radius set to 350 and my outer radius set to 595. Now, in order to make the splines render, I'm using the hair renderer. So I created a hair material and I've only got two things checked here. Under color, I just have a simple gray color, mostly because I'm gonna color this in After Effects. And then as my thickness to so the root is set to 0.1, the tip is set to 0.1. And again, this is what it looks like when it's rendered out. So that's it. Like I said, the setup is really simple, but think what you could do with this. So definitely play with this technique and see what you come up with. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev and we'll see you soon.